Hey, this is Ellis with The Verge checking out Chrome for iPhone and iPad. So let's jump right in. Chrome on iPhone asks you to first sign in with your Google account. And once you do, you'll see these tab screens. So you can go through your tabs. You can flick one off the screen. If you enter a tab, you can do edge drag to actually go between them. And there's a little indicator bar at the top showing how far along the site is in loading. But let's say you want to check out some tabs that you were looking at on another device. So if you do new tab, you get a window down here where you can look at other devices. So here's my iPad last synced two minutes ago. So there's IGN, Facebook, and Gmail. Here's on my MacBook Air last synced eight minutes ago. So you can actually see the, uh, the tabs that you have open on each computer. And you can force this to refresh if you go out and then go back in. And also you have bookmarks, all your Chrome bookmarks, like mobile, other desktop bookmarks. So um, you can go through all these. You can edit them. And it's all really fast. If you look up at the top of the screen, you'll see Chrome's familiar Omnibox. Uh, going to websites, even though this doesn't use the Nitro uh, JavaScript enhancements mobile Safari uses, is still really fast. There's a menu up here to go to settings. It's kind of like the one you'd find in Android. And you can star your sites. You can refresh the page. There's actually no forward button. because and you pretty infrequently need it. Uh, you only see it if you press back. Uh, then you can see the forward button right there. But up here, again, there are new tab. There's new incognito tab, which actually takes you into, uh, see, you've gone incognito. You can see the incognito is actually separate. So if you go back to here, you can actually email the page from here. You can find in page for words that you want to look up. And request desktop site, which is interesting, because you can actually change the user agent from within the browser. So you can get desktop sites. And then you can also dig a little deeper with regular settings. You can change your search engine from Google to Yahoo to Bing. You can save your passwords. Voice search works pretty well uh, on here from the Omnibar. You can use Siri's voice search if you want uh, using the microphone down here like you usually would. Or if you hit the X, you can use Google's voice search. The Verge to look up whatever you want. One nice thing is that if you're logging into a site you've never been to before, you enter in your username and password, and uh, Chrome for iOS will actually ask you down here, uh, do you want Google Chrome to save your password for this site? You can exit, you can hit yes, or you can hit never. And those changes will take, uh, take effect in any other instance of Chrome you're running. Chrome on iPad is virtually the same, but you have the tabs up here. You have a toggle in the top right that you switch between uh, incognito and regular mode. And uh, you have this persistent star microphone and drop down menu on the side here. But besides that, it's pretty similar. One cool thing, though, is that you won't get the animation, but you can do the edge tab switch like you can on Chrome for, uh, Chrome for iPhone. So if we want to take a look at the other tabs from here, if you do new tab, you can swipe between most visited bookmarks and other devices. So let's look at other devices. And you can see the iPhone uh, we were just looking at right now is on my site, The Verge, Pitchfork, back on The Verge. One of the most valuable things here is that the way they pitch it, if you're on your iPhone and you're checking something out and then you want to go on your iPad, uh, it'll be there. So let's say we want to look at IMDb. So I have IMDb open on the iPhone right now. And uh, let's say I am going over the couch. I want to look at it on the iPad right here. So IMDb is loaded over here. And uh, let's just hit refresh on the iPad. And boom, IMDb is right there. You can also move around tabs, drag them around however you'd like. And you can close them just like that, just as easily. Chrome is pretty close in terms of speed with mobile Safari. Uh, but in some situations on JavaScript heavy web pages, it's probably going to be a bit slower because it doesn't include Apple's Nitro JavaScript booster. If you use Chrome every day on your Mac or PC at home, you're definitely going to want to download Chrome for iOS. It's really smooth. It works well. And uh, everything is just really easy to use. While you do have to dig through a little bit for settings or to go through to your tabs or bookmarks, unlike in mobile Safari, you just have a lot more space on screen because there's no navigation bar down there. And uh, even if it may be, in some instances, a little bit slower, it's still definitely something you want to try.